When we look at Ostian bathing, we're looking at one of the basic fundamental components of Roman civilization. The Roman baths were centers of socialization, entertainment, and politics. In Ostia Antica, over 15 baths filled the ancient city. Today, we see the remnants of the baths' grandeur. Public bathing offered large places for all people to congregate. Men, women, and even slaves could enjoy aspects of the baths. I mean, think about this as being a really truly democratic establishment because you have all people from all walks of life going to the same facilities, using the same facilities. But beneath the surface of these massive structures, slave labor kept the democracy above running. Think about the other slaves that are in the bathing facilities, those that, that are the attendants, the people that are holding the towels, the people that are cleaning the, uh, the pavements, the people that are down below stoking the fires in the perfernium. So who is going to be uncomfortable, tired, hot, sweaty, in a dark environment? Those are the slaves. Under the great baths, the slaves ran the Romans' unique heating technology. When we're talking about what technologies were used in the baths, two things come to mind. One is the heating system, which is quite sophisticated. So you have raised floors, pavements resting on series of tiles or bricks, and this is called the hypocaust system, and ultimately you have the heat being stoked fired by slaves and the heat is traveling underneath the floor and then traveling up the walls. So you actually have a series of tubes, tubuli, these uh, basically uh, hollow bricks that are stacked to make a kind of a chimney system. So the heat will pass underneath the floor and then through those tubes and so you've got a radiant heat and they end up going out the top. The slaves working in the baths had their own designated areas. This sort of vaulted area right here represents the slave corridors. We're talking about who were the people that were working and making the baths functional. They were slaves for the most part. And this is not the kind of duty that you'd want to have. I mean, it's one thing to be up in the baths and be the towel boy or to be skimming off the pool with all the, the dirt and, uh, on the surface of the water. But it's another thing to be down here. It's dark. It's dank. It's miserable and you've got every so often these massive furnaces going with all the fire and the soot and the dust and the smoke. It's not a pleasant place. The structure of the Roman baths was also important to the heating technology. There's some variety in the ordering of the rooms and the sometimes even symmetry where you have double room systems, but essentially the components are going to be repeated. There's a changing room, the apodotarium, so you're going to basically not change into something, but rather go around naked. You're going to disrobe. You're going to have uh, the frigidarium, the cold rooms, the rooms that are not heated, that will have pools of water that are not heated. And you can progress to, to rooms that are warmer and warmer. So you have the tepidarium and finally the caldarium, which is going to have hotter and hotter spaces. Daily life in the baths varied for different types of people. A rich Ostian citizen may have experienced a day similar to this. In the early morning, while my husband is carrying out his business transactions, I visit a nearby bath. I prefer the forum baths. They are grand and beautiful and just a short distance away from my husband's business. When I arrive, I enter the apodidarium to undress, leaving my clothes and shoes behind with a slave to look after them. My other slave follows me with my towels. My body is oiled, and I exercise by engaging in daily women's competition. When the men are not present, I will exercise in the palestra, a huge and grand space, perfect for all sorts of sports. I then have the dirt and oil scraped from my body, and bathing can begin. I prefer to begin in the tepidarium. I warm my body in here. The large glass windows, nestled in between huge columns, allow the sun to shine in, making the bath even warmer and more pleasant. I make my way to the caldarium eventually, where I submerge myself in a hot bath. Often, I will again return to the tepidarium before finishing in the frigidarium, where I can enjoy a refreshingly cool soak. While I bathe, I chat with the other important women of Ostia. My day at the baths ends with a stroll through the gardens or a light snack from one of the many vendors roaming around the area. 
For the slaves who worked in the baths, life underground was much different than life above. My day at the bath begins before the Roman citizens awake. The baths must be very hot to please the customers. It takes a lot of work to make this happen. I create a large fire in the perfernium. The furnace is lowered beneath the bath. Down here it is hot and cramped. I have to stoke the fire constantly. If I can make enough money, maybe I will go to the bath myself next week. I need a break. I love the caldarium the most. The heated floors and walls wrap me in pleasure. Heating the caldarium is a painful task. My arms hurt from stoking the fire. Sometimes I like to sunbathe in the baths as well. I sit with the other women and soak up the bright light through the open windows. There is little sunlight in the slave areas. The most light we have comes from the fire. A massage or manicure is always a possibility, depending on my mood. I can't help but envy the citizens who can afford the extra pampering and the baths. People may be impressed by the magnificence of the baths when they first visit Ostia Antica. The role of the slaves often goes unnoticed. But without these persevering people, the Romans never would have experienced the luxury they became known for.